Hello, and welcome to Concertina.com. I'm Justin Leppard, and in today's episode, we're gonna be trying out five different rosins, all from Amazon, you can buy them, and we're gonna see how big of a difference these rosins make, review them, just see generally what advice I can give for you as you try rosin. Rosin makes a big difference to the bow. If you've ever had a bow rehaired and haven't put rosin on it, it won't make any sound at all. So it certainly is an important factor. Even if you're just starting out, getting the right equipment can really make your learning go a lot better. So we're just gonna discuss some rosins and at whatever level you're at, I hope the information is helpful. So because it's you don't wanna to rosin too much at any one time, in fact, over rosining can cause hairs to break faster than they otherwise would. Uh, this video will be spread out over several days so that I have the chance to get a couple of days to use the rosin. And without further ado, let's get started. So the very first cello rosin that we're gonna be trying is just this normal stick rosin. It's called Sherman's Cello Rosin. I definitely used one of these when I first began playing cello, as I'm sure a lot of beginners have. Definitely the cheapest one on Amazon. And what looks like a bonus is you have these kind of runners, although that's actually a detriment because eventually rosin wears down if you're always going in the same direction. Eventually it'll wear down a groove that's rosining the sides of the bow hairs more than the center. Another advantage of this rosin, though, is that it's very dark. Dark rosin is really good for cello. Basically, the darker the rosin is, the stickier it is. And without any rosin, your bow's not going to be able to pull sound at all. So sticky is good. Sticky means you can get a fuller sound and better articulation on the whole. So I'm expecting this rosin to work very functionally, though if you use it long term, you're not going to be getting as good of a result. But let's go try it out and see how it is. So overall, this is a pretty decent rosin. I found the tone to be quite robust, and I definitely found there to be enough stickiness when I was changing bows, almost a little too much. There's definitely a harshness to the articulation, and I found that it was a bit of a struggle to find a variety of colors. Colors are just different sounds, types of sounds you can make. Sometimes it'll sound sweeter versus rougher. Those are all timbres or colors. So. The one thing that I really liked about this rosin is that when I was playing the melody, I found that it was very easy to not have little chinks in the sound when I was changing bows. When I was playing with some of the faster stuff or string crossing, there it was a little bit harder, a little more noticeable. And one trick that I did discover is that on this one at least, which is the Sherman's cello rosin, there is just enough space that you can kind of wiggle it side to side as you rosin. So if you want to get this rosin, it's definitely a good place to start and you can use that little trick of going side to side as well so that it'll wear down more evenly. But let's see what else we have in store. The next rosin that we're gonna try is one that's specifically made for cello, marketed for cello by Perastro. They make a lot of different types of rosin. So this one uh, is not quite as black as the other one. It's this actual nice amber color. And you can get uh, Perastro Schwartz, which is the totally black rosin. You can also use these on violin and viola, but the reason why it's for cello is that it's dark, but it's not so dark that it's gritty. So this is probably gonna me be meant to make a nice cello sound, uh, nice and warm. And um, I think from reading the comments, it can produce a little more dust, which could be a factor if you're allergic or you just want to be able to keep your instrument nice. But we're gonna try it out. We're gonna see how it does come back right here in a second. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
So I definitely like this uh, better than the first rosin that we used. I would say if you can get this, it's only about twice as much. It's definitely preferable. It's not as gritty. You're not going to get some of the harshness. It's a little bit more three-dimensional in terms of the sound and colors that you can get. Um, I'm excited to keep trying these and see what more there is. Hi guys, so the rosin we're doing today is the Melos Dark Cello Rosin. Uh, supposedly, I guess, meant to be a little bit grippier cello rosin. What you may notice about it though is that the color is not very dark, although it's called Melos Dark Rosin. And as we discussed, dark is gonna mean a grittier sound. So I'm kind of excited to see about this one. It definitely seems like uh, maybe there's not gonna be too much dust to it. It has this nice pattern at the bottom of a tree. That's kind of nice. Uh, so let's go find out what it sounds like. So the pros of the Melos Dark Rosin are definitely that it goes on very smoothly without a lot of dust, and also that it is definitely a very dark, uh, like rough rosin. Um, and I do say rough because I definitely felt like I personally was struggling to get nicer tones out of it. And at the end, I put on another swipe of the uh, Parastro rosin and I found that a lot of the warmth and smoothness that I'd appreciated about that came back. So this is a good example of actually different rosins being good for different people because I don't necessarily want to say that one of these last two is better or worse. And they're both basically the exact same price. So if you have a little bit of time, it might be worth getting both the Parastro and the Melo Stark rosin because I personally would use the Parastro because of my playing style and I could see how for somebody else, they would really appreciate the stronger articulation and maybe even the harsher sound. It's certainly a bold, big sound. I was just having a harder time getting smooth, uh, warm sounds from it personally. So hopefully this is really helpful because there, there are really differences as opposed to better or worse. But now we're gonna move on to the final two rosins, both of which are very, very highly rated, definitely used by professionals and orchestra and soloists. I'm very excited to try them. One is dark, one is light. So I will think that I will like the light one better, but we're gonna try the dark one first because we're going up in terms of price. So, on to it. Okay, so we're down to our last two rosins, and these ones are what I would consider kind of an elite category of rosin. Now, personally, I've never tried rosins that are a little bit, um, they're also pricier, a little pricier like this. But I have definitely noticed a difference with rosins. If you get fresh rosin, it can make a big difference. And as we have already noted in this video, the difference between different types of rosin, even at the same price point, can make a big difference to playability. So this one is a dark, a dark rosin. Let me unscrew it for a second. It's a very dark rosin. It's the darkest one we've had since the very first one that we did, actually. And uh, it comes in, this one comes in a half cake or a full cake, uh, a little cheaper is the half cake. This is the half cake. And um, the reviews on Amazon are absolutely great. So let's go see what it sounds like. Thank you. 
So without a doubt, this is very good rosin. Contrary to my expectation um, of it being dark, it had an even smoother sound than the Parastro, uh, yet it was very full bodied and warm. When I was playing melodically, it was hands down the best rosin we've had so far. And I also noticed that the ends of my notes, had I had much less difficulty in maintaining them than I did with the other rosins where they chinked up a little bit. So overall, very good control. I do still think that as far as playing some things that are a little bit faster or string crossings, there's a little left to be desired as far as grippiness. Um, but let's see with the final rosin, the what I've been considering the holy grail of this the whole time, the gold uh, does. <laughs> Okay, so this is our final rosin. I've been very excited about this, the Lorica Gold 3. Not only because it's the most expensive on Amazon, but it's also a rather light color compared to the other ones. And I, so far I've been finding that that works better for my bow. So we're gonna go see how it sounds and come back back. <laughs> So no surprises, I definitely really like this rosin. It was way stickier than I might have expected for the color, uh, to the point that uh, I might have even over rosin. I barely had to push down compared to what I'm used to with the bow to get a really nice sound. So this is definitely a great rosin. As far as you comparing this to the Andrea, I wonder if, since I do tend to play a little more experimentally, if I will get more out of this, and if I wanted to play more normally, I would use the Andrea just to be able to have a little bit more of a consistent centered sound to it. Um, definitely really like this. Let's head over to the review. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I just wanted to recap everything that we've done. So we started with the basic rosin that just has a little stick and maybe can be a little bit difficult as it wear down, wears down unevenly. That rosin was a great rosin. It didn't have too much um, dust to it. It had a, a very strong sound and it certainly works. If you go a little bit up, we have the darker rosin that we used and the lighter Parastro rosin that we used. Personally, I strongly prefer for myself the Parastro, but it's important that you try for yourself which you prefer. And if you have $30 to spend, you can get both and see which one you like. Then we tried two that were more professional grade. They cost a little bit more money. And definitely when you're more advanced, you're gonna notice a difference with those in terms of articulation and control. They may not make that big of a difference when you're starting out. So if you're starting out, I would recommend starting with those two middle tier rosins because that is going to just be a better starting place than starting with the stick rosin. And if you're starting cello, 
you know, penny pinching over the $7 difference or the $9 difference is not really probably as big of an issue as getting the cello in the first place and taking lessons and everything. So probably just go for those rosins and experiment because I, I was surprised, genuinely surprised that different rosins made such a big difference. I have not done an experiment like this before in my own life and I was genuinely surprised. So I have learned a lot. Um, one thing that is important to note that could be a potential criticism of this, so I just want to bring it up, is that some people think that you shouldn't be mixing rosins. And I mixed rosins because I didn't get a rehair between each rosin use. So that could be one thing that made a difference in my experience of these rosins. And if you want to do an even more intensive research, you could try starting with a fresh rehair and then starting with some of these rosins. But I think that that is a bit unnecessary. Experiment first and then with whatever your favorite rosin is, next time you get a rehair, just use that rosin. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got a lot out of it. Really appreciate you guys watching. We have a lot of lessons on this site and I hope you explore them all. Let us know in the comments what you think and how your journey with cello is going. Once again, I'm Justin Leopard with Concertina.com. We hope to see you next time. Thank mm -hmm. you.